In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic experiment in Azure ML Studio. To begin with, we should start with where things are at the main level. So at the main level, you have data sets. This is how you would add in a new data set. I already have my data in there, which is this one, so I'm not going to do that. But this is where you would add in a new data set. You can go to projects or experiments. I'll go directly to experiments and show you the outcome result of what we're doing. So here we're bringing in the car buyer data set. We are then splitting it. Uh, this is your splitting it into training and validation. Then we select the columns. This is the input columns. We're going to train the model over here. And when we train the model, we have to select a outcome variable. This is the modeler, the algorithm that we're going to train on the model. Uh, after the model has been trained, then we'll score the model and then we will evaluate the model and show the results. So this is the outcome. And so I'm just going to build this now, build an equivalent to this. So now let's go over to experiments and do a new experiment. Let's get a blank experiment. I've previously saved my data in my data set down here. So I'm going to go down here and bring this into the data area here. After we do that, then we need to go down to our data transformations. And we need to bring in our select columns in data set. So we'll go down here, select column in data set, drag this over here. And then we're going to go from this connection down to here, put that in there. OK, so now we need to select which column. So we'll launch the column selector. And we're going to put all of them in here, including our outcome variable, which happens to be buyer. Get that done. All right, once we've done that, then we need to split the data. So we're going to bring this in, connect that up. So that's going to split the data. And it says, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to split the rows. And we're going to put 0.6 in the first partition. And we'll randomize the split using a randomized seed of 1. OK, so that's set. Now we need to bring in our, our modeler so we can go down to machine learning. Under machine learning, we're going to go down to initialize model. And then this happens to be a classification approach. And then down here, we need to get a two class support vector machine. Now we need to train the model using the data. And from the two class support vector machine, we're going to go to this input right here. So now we're ready to train the model. And then we need to score the model. And so now we're going to bring a score model in over here. So the idea here is that out of the split data, we're going to have a training set go down to here. And then we're going to have a validation set that goes down to here. After the, train, after the model has been trained, then we can go into scoring it. So here's the data coming in. Here's the model that's been trained, and we're going to go down to the score modeling. And then now we should be down to evaluate model, which is right here. And so we can bring this down. We have our data here. We have saved columns. We have our split data. All right, let's take care of this error right here. It says I don't have a valid floating point number in there. So let's go in here. And it's a little hard to see, but there's two decimals in there. It should just be 0.6. So that's OK. That little error message goes away. And then to train a model in here, let's go in here. It says we need a value. That's our outcome variable that we need to select. So we need to go in and tell it what is our outcome variable. We want to include buyer as our outcome variable. All right. Now we can fold this back out of our way here. So now we've got everything all set to go. And we can. Go ahead and run our model. Takes a few moments. Under Evaluate Models, we need to visualize this. And then this will bring us up to our rock chart. So we can see the rock chart. It looks like it's doing pretty well with the true positives and the false positives. And as we scroll down here, it shows us kind of a here's what's going on in the model. And then it brings us down to true positives of 74, 
false positives of 26, false negatives of 76, and true negatives is 1824. You can see that the threshold right here is the probability cutoff is at 0.5. And in, if we move this around, and if you, watch the, if you watch the confusion matrix information over here, if I move this to the left, you're going to see that, uh, that the false positives went up and the true positives went up. So the true positives went up and the false positives. And if I bring it back over to about 50%, you can see it's this way. And if we go back this way, then false positives go down and both the true positives and the false positives go down area under the curve does not change as we move the probability cutoff dragger around and so that will just stay fixed. So after we've collected this model performance at the various levels of cutoff that we want then we can change this and then what we would need to do is if we wanted to try another modeler in here then we would go back and we would put in a different one. Let's see, it would be a two-class decision for us because this is a two-class problem. And then put those in here. And then rerun the model and evaluate it and then look at the evaluation results that are in here. When you're done, you can save this and give it a name and then this will be saved in your Azure account.